Welcome to a video from thedislifestyle.com In this video we're going to look at the initial setup experience when you go get Windows 10 for the first time It could be a new PC that you've got or you've had a PC that's reset and ready to go for you So I'm going to walk through that experience, it's called the out of box experience And I'm going to show you how you can sign on with uh, your Microsoft account and download apps you've already purchased or downloaded in the past and uh, just show you some of the options you get from from Windows and how they affect the setup of your new PC. So the very first step, and by the way, this is a virtual machine. I'm, I'm using Hyper-V on a Surface Laptop 2, but this is exactly what you get if you've got a new device. So the first question it's asking me if I've got the right region, which for me is correct, so I can accept that. And it's asking me if I've got the right keyboard layout, which is correct. You can add an ad additional keyboard layout actually, so you could add a US keyboard or something like that, but I'm going to skip that for now. So now it's asking, do I set this up with a personal account or an organization? So an organization is if you're part of a business and you've been given an email address and password or a username and password and you sign in through that, it's a business machine or an organizational own machine. This for me is my own machine, so I'm going to set this up for personal use. I'm going to sign in with a Microsoft account. Uh, MSA they're often called as well so this could be a hotmail address uh, outlook.com address or it could be a, your own addre email address that you've used to create a Microsoft account the Microsoft account is where uh, you might have it for Skype you might have it for your Xbox you might have it for all your PCs it's a way of saying who you are is going to use this PC so I'm going to sign in with with that so I've signed in now and I've used um, I use something on Android, you can get it for iOS as well, called Microsoft Authenticator app. This is something called two-factor identification. So um, what that means is that I have to approve this sign-in request on my phone. So if someone guesses or tries to hijack my account, they'd have to have my phone, which is secure through a fingerprint reader as well. I'll probably do another video on that. It's called Microsoft Authenticator, two-factor authentication, and it's well worth setting up if you're... Uh, well, it's well worth setting up. Anyway, regardless of uh, what device you've got, so I would definitely have a look at that. But like I said, I'll probably do a separate video on that. So now it's asking, because I've signed in with the password wordless system using the two-factor, I can create a pin to sign in. So I'm going to create a pin so I don't have to enter a password each time I log in, I can use a pin. If you've got a device like uh, a Microsoft Surface or anything that's got uh, something called Windows Hello, you can use your face to sign in. So I'll sign in with my pin now. So now it's going to ask me some of the questions to get started before we get to the Windows desktop. So the first question it's asking me here is, do I want to use voice recognition? So I can use Cortana, which is Microsoft Voice Assistant, or um, Dictation, and you have to accept that if you want to use it. So I'm going to say yes. I'll let uh, apps know my location. So that could be used for the Weather app or the Maps app, so it knows where you are. And part of that is I can use Find My Device as well. So this is a way of finding where your device is. So if you lose a device, you can see when it last talked to the network. So a very handy thing to have. So I'm going to enable that. And I'll probably do a separate video on how to find a device as well. Next question is diagnostic data. So how you're using Windows, if there's any crashes, all that goes back to Microsoft and they can evaluate and improve Windows. So you can choose which you send. It's anonymized, so it's uh, just diagnostic data, but you can choose whether to send basic information or uh, a full set of diagnostics. I'll set the full one. Do I want to use inking? Yes, I'm going to use a pen with a surface, so let's accept that. And this is now coming to a bit more advertising, tailored experience. So what basically this will do is, it's a way of uh, Windows to advertise your relevant apps and recommendations. So yeah, it's advertising. Um, if you say no, you'll just get more generic advertising and it's using this advertiser ID to really personalize those um, ads for you. So if you say no, then you just get generics. So now I can choose to do something called, um, I can do activity history. So this is where when you're using Windows, you can use timeline, which is the Windows and tab key. And you can look back at your activity cross devices. So if you want your device to participate in that, then you can say yes. The next screen is asking me if I want to get Android's uh, text notifications of photos into uh, into Windows 10. It does that something called with the Your Phone app, which I found really valuable. I've got a separate video on Your Phone. But basically what you can do with Your Phone, you, uh, you get text message on your Android phone, it'll pop up in Windows, you can reply to it. 
you can get notifications from your Android phone. They pop up in Windows as well. You can copy pictures between them. Uh, you can even make calls from your PC via your phone. So you, I, I definitely want to do that. You just type your number in here, hit send, and it sends the link to your phone uh, so you can download the app. Next question is... Um, backing up your files with OneDrive. So OneDrive is Microsoft cloud solution for backing um, your, your files. So you can access the files on your machine, but they're also backed up at Microsoft. You can access them across devices and through the web as well. So I definitely want that enabled. Now I can, uh, Cortana is Microsoft's voice assistant, uh, a little bit like Amazon Alexa. It's not quite as many functions, but it can do things, um, especially the latest versions of it are about creating emails and productivity, so I'm going to accept that. So now it's just going through the final setup. So once this finishes, I fire up the desktop and I can then look at getting some of my apps down. Right, here at the desktop now, and uh, I can see it's just finishing off setting up OneDrive and the shortcuts that are appearing on my desktop. That's because I've got OneDrive uh, desktop shared across devices as well. So I've got basically the shortcuts shared across all my devices. So now that's uh, completing the setup, I'm just going to go to the Microsoft Store. So this is the place where all the apps that I've downloaded in the past and purchased are available on here. Of course, you can go and install things if you're familiar like Google Chrome. You can just fire up the browser here, go and get it Chrome. You can get the new version of Microsoft Edge. If you just search for Microsoft Edge, you'll find that. You can go to office.com and sign in with your Microsoft or your Office 365 account and download your uh, Office email um Excel and so on, those kind of apps through there. But I'm going to use the Microsoft Store to pull down uh, some apps for me. So here I am in the Microsoft Store. I can, obviously I can search and download apps and, and buy apps from here. But I'm going to go to my library and actually pick up some existing things I've got in the past. So you can see here, uh, for example, Twitter. I can install that because I've got that in the past. Um, some stuff I've recently got. So... Let me find another app that I want to pick. Let's say Windows Terminal. I'll have that as well. So I can go through this list. All the things that I've uh, got in the past, I can now download those. Something else that's well worth doing when you first get a new machine as well is go to Download and Updates and check for updates because there'll be a load of updates available because obviously these apps are built into the image or the laptop or the PC that you, you've just got. They've been updated by Microsoft since they were first installed. So the uh, your phone exam, for example, it's in this on this PC, but Microsoft updated it. So I'm going to check for updates, and you'll see it'll do a ton of updates of these apps as well as installing my two ones that I've requested. Okay, so it's just installed some of the apps. You can see it's downloading all the updates to previous apps. So, for example, with the terminal app I've just installed, uh, selected Della, that's already installed now. And you can see it's downloading the, the Twitter app and uh, up, doing updates for all these other apps as well. So really, now that this machine is ready to go, I can go and install uh, Office 365. I could install Google Chrome, new Microsoft Edge, whatever you need to install Teams, whatever, whatever you need, you can go do that. But this machine is all set up now for me and ready to go. So that's the out-of-box experience of Windows 10. So thanks for watching this video. You can see more on our YouTube channel on the digitallifestyle.com at ISDixon on Twitter.